I just feel very strange. I'm just following them the whole way, but it's really cool. Oh, it's such an amazing atmosphere. Oh, I'll be honest guys, I feel like royalty with this hat, and I look like it too. <laughs> I mean, my name is Amir, which in Arabic means prince, and also Amir Timur, which we're going to discover more about him through our trip here in Uzbekistan. Um, yeah, every time I walk past like a glass or a mirror or something, I'm like, oh, your highness, and then I realise it's just me. Vibe. Sorry if it's a bit shaky, I am rushing. Oh, wow. Sorry if it was zoomed in before as well, apologies. We basically, the old city can be done in the day. We've got two, thankfully. So basically gonna end up doing the whole kind of route that I've walked, do it again, but this time go into more buildings. At the moment, I've just gone into the ones where you just have to pay extra for. Mama, I did a bad thing. <laughs> I bought something that I probably shouldn't have. It was 18, 17 pounds. So, you know, not that expensive and it's very different and probably too loud. I like different fashion, so there you go. Right, we're gonna go to a restaurant now which has a view of the terrace, so let's go and do that. There's a vibe, there's a party, and where there is a vibe and a party, I am there, ladies and gentlemen. It's probably not entirely true, but... Oh, I'm excited. Oh, wow. You just find these special, special shots for taking photos, which I will end the video to do right now, sorry. There's our restaurant. Teresa. Or Terrasa. <laughs> Lit atmosphere. I think I got quite lucky that I got a table here because most of the tables are reserved and I've come at an amazing time. Golden hour. <laughs> no, not live. <laughs> Oh my god, guys. 
<laughs> this place is beautiful. This country is beautiful. Can I go in? Please tell me I can go in. Oh my god. We can go in. Okay. This kind of madrasa looks so much like Samarkand. Obviously Samarkand I haven't been to yet, but it's it's what Uzbekistan is the most famous for. Obviously Uzbekistan is famous for all of these buildings, but the most famous is the Registan Square in Samarkand. It has to be the most beautiful country in the world. If you want to know how many pictures I've taken, I have charged my phone from zero to a hundred three times today. So bring a power pack. It is astonishing. I, I honest, honestly, honest to God, this is unreal. You see pictures, and you, you know you see pictures, but when you're here, when you're here, guys, oh, it just does not compare. It's all nice looking at photos and I've had a few people actually message me on Instagram this time that I've been in Central Asia. People whom I wouldn't normally speak to or, you know, people, you know, just kind of mutual people you follow. Intrigued about this region and, and rightfully so, you should be intrigued. It is outstanding. Kyrgyzstan, I've already said it. I'm, I'm done with Kyrgyzstan. I, I was there for a week. It's one of the best places I've ever been in my life. Uzbekistan. I've been here a day in Kiva. It's it got the history, it's got the feel, but also it's got the aesthetics, but it's also got a very tourist friendly atmosphere. So it's it's an amazing, amazing country, amazing place. I know some people that come to Uzbekistan don't come to Khiva because it is a little bit far away and it's not necessarily the easiest thing to get to. You can fly to Ugrench, which is 45 minutes away. Not that bad, probably the best way to do it. You can take a train, takes around six hours from Bukhara. I think it's very long. I think it wastes your day, frankly, and the train is very slow. So I've heard, but it's totally worth it. Totally, totally worth it if you come to Uzbekistan. I don't think you're doing the country justice if you are not coming to Khiva. Because obviously we're, only, we're in Khiva one more day, we've got one more day here. Tomorrow I'm going to plan and do sunset on the wall, because I saw people doing that today. Thank you. This is actually my hotel and I did ask them if I could use that bridge to go inside and they said the minaret is closed, you can't actually go inside. So tragic news. The location, anywhere you stay here I think is absolutely fine. The location here is fantastic because it's obviously next to the minaret. You do however get people coming into the hotel and someone did come and was like, oh can I see your room? And I was just checking in, I was like, sure, no problem. But other guests might get annoyed at that, but I don't have an issue with it. I was like, yeah, I'll offer you some tea if I had some. <laughs> right, good morning and welcome to another day here in Khiva. So today the plan is to basically go inside everything that we did not see that we need a ticket for. So I just came out of the city and the ticket office is just there. So it's literally just outside of the city. Those are kind of the main double gates. No, not, yeah, double, like double pillared gates. And as soon as you come in, you'll be able to see the Muhammad Amin Madrasa and also the big column, which I need to learn the lame, name of. And there's this iconic statue here that I've come to take some photos at. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Silk Road.
All right, so we are now here at the Juma Mosque, which just translates to Friday Mosque, Friday Prayers Mosque, which I don't really get the name of. I don't, I don't understand why they call them that because a mosque is for more than Fridays. But anyway, so let's go inside. I believe we'll have to show our ticket for this. Well, maybe not actually, but you do need to take your shoes off, presumably if it's a mosque. Okay, it's very beautiful in here. It reminds me of the Basilica Cistern in Istanbul. But you don't need to take your shoes off. Um, not sure why. I mean, it is out, out kind of outdoor floor, but still. So yeah, she marked my ticket. So this is one of those ticket places. Okay, so we are now in the courtyard of one of the madrasas. And the reason why I'm vlogging here is just to give you a little bit of educational information. So for those of you who don't know what madrasas are, most of these beautiful buildings that you'll see in Uzbekistan are madrasas. So a madrasa was basically just an educational institution. It could have been used for religious reasons, it could have been used for secular reasons, so just purely academic. Um, but I'm here in the courtyard where teaching would usually take place. So the teaching would usually take place in the courtyard. The rooms inside, I think, were usually used to house the students. And education in the madrasas used to be free. There was probably an element of nepotism there. So if you knew someone, you could get in. But as well as the education being free, you would also get free healthcare. And presumably food would have been included as well. So, you know, just reflecting on it. <laughs> It feels like we've gone back in time, considering we're now paying, or at least in the UK, we're paying to go to university for, frankly, BTEC education. And I'm sorry for being harsh on that, but I was a COVID, or I am a COVID university student, um, who had a really bad experience. So, to me, to be paying for BTEC education when thousands, well, not thousands, that's an exaggeration, hundreds of years ago, they would have free education here as well as healthcare, food, accommodation provided, it, you can't help but feel like you've gone back in time. You buy your ticket, you're given this map, which kind of has about, what, 20 points that you should go to. Now, um, whilst these points are all good, what you'll find is just like little kind of crevices, and maybe this is actually on the map. <laughs> I think it, maybe it is. This is a carpet warehouse. So kind of like the one we saw yesterday, but, um, this one is designated for tourists. I think the other one was just a coincidence that I happened to come across. Look at it, it's beautiful. You feel like you're in Aladdin. Okay, so we are in the craft center, which is just basically like all the shops, but in a big kind of under one roof. So um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's cheaper. I don't think it's probably the same price because everyone gets their stuff from the same place. But um, yeah, it's just nice walking through here. They don't get much business here in the craft center, so make sure you come here, and if you can, shop here as well. I found this random room with a staircase. I think, I don't know if they're supposed to check my ticket, but let's see, maybe there's a viewpoint. I can hear some voices, I just don't want them to tell me off for being here. They're like, no, you have to pay. They don't shout at you here, they're very, very kind. Oh, wow, okay. I think it might be the case that you would have had to have paid to kind of walk along the wall. But to be honest, this part is actually higher. So if you wanted a view of the sunset, I've actually incidentally found this. I was planning on coming to some sort of wall, but I actually coincidentally found this and it's not sunset just yet. So I'm here a little bit prematurely. The fantastic opportunity actually to see the walls you can see how they kind of go all around. There's our hotel. It's called the Orient Star Hotel, if you did want to stay there. It was around £40 a night, something like that. Very, very well worth it. 
and it's all the other sites that over this vlog that we've been looking over absolutely stunning a beautiful 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 city you must 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 come to Khiva it's an absolute essential just like Samarkand Bukhara it, I know it's a bit far to come but it's absolutely must such a vibe I, I just feel like I'm in Aladdin you know I've never been somewhere so close with the streets and the market stalls and kind of the atmosphere the old city walls it's just like Aladdin it's beautiful okay I was about to walk out and then the lady was like trying to sell me something and then I didn't want to buy it but then she was like no there's a museum don't leave and she brought me here. This is what I mean, like even if you don't give them your business, they don't hold anything against you. They're so polite, they're so kind. I feel just warmed, warmed by the Uzbek people. The name of this is, I'm gonna read it. <laughs> it's called Madrasa Muhammad Rakim Khan II. And this is the same area, there's ruins kind of through there, but this is the same area where you will find the view on the wall that you can go to for free included within your ticket of course look at that so i think these halls were made for entertainment that's why i'm currently on a stage right now a circular stage right this seems like an ideal spot to end the video i'm gonna say thank you so much for watching and for experiencing khiva with me um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it if you did. Please subscribe and follow for more because we are going to be going to Bukhara next. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. But otherwise, see you in the next one.